Hey, hey, welcome to a new guest channel, Germany Review. I am Christopher and today I am going to give you guys a closer look at the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 Prime. If you are one of those people who believe that Xiaomi got a little boring to watch lately, you all will agree that that changed with their return to MediaTek chipsets and the release of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. They clearly showed what they are still capable of and still can make devices that let us all say wow. The Redmi Note 2 comes with the MediaTek Helio X10 SoC while being priced at only 120 bucks in the basic version in China. That pricing was completely mind-blowing since back then devices with a Helio X10 SoC have been priced at about 280 bucks. That was quite a remarkable price cut and it still is today. So the prime version of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 was my daily driver for a while now and during this time it was able to show me what it's capable of. So what you see in front of the camera is what you get with the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. Well almost the documentation is still inside the box. So you get besides the documentation one USB cable which is pretty long and black one wall charger with 2 ampere and of course the phone and that's it. The device itself looks typical for a Redmi Note device. The design hasn't been changed much compared to the first generation. The front still is black and features red touch buttons below the screen which are back illuminated as well as a front camera in the upper area above the screen, a phone receiver, some sensors and also an RGB notification light. The most significant design change can be found on the and it's the camera which isn't square shaped anymore and doesn't stick out of the body that much anymore. Um, besides of that f ring remains the same, the rear is white or black depending on your color choice and made from matte polycarbonate and covers not only the rear but also the sides of the phone. So on the sides we can find the on off switch as well as the volume rocker in silver color which both sit in place tightly and have very nice pressure points. On the lower side we find the micro USB port along a voice microphone and on the upper side we find the headphone jack, an infrared blaster and another microphone. Removing the rear cover is as simple as pulling your fingernail on one of the lower edges and just pull it off with some force. Um, this uncovers the removable battery along a micro SD card reader and two micro SIM slots and also the media speaker down below the battery. The build quality of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 is very decent in my opinion. There are no gaps or moving parts and bending the device actually takes quite some force even with the back cover um, removed and even if you bend it there is no instant damage done to the phone. One flaw though is the sides of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 since it definitely is one of the larger 5.5 inches out there and you can see that when I place the Xiaomi, uh, I'm sorry, the Meizu um, MX5 right on top of it, which is a little bit smaller than uh, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. The exact dimensions of the Redmi Note 2 are 152 by 88 by 8.5 millimeters and the weight of this phablet is 158 grams. Specs wise the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 Prime is an extremely attractive device being priced at about 180 bucks on international reseller shops. The phone is equipped with a 5.5 inch display operating at 1080p resolution and boasting IPS and OGS technology. The quality of the panel in my opinion is very good. I really like how it displays the colors. I like the contrast and also the brightness is very high but still there are some issues in case sun shines directly onto the screen which sometimes makes it hard to see anything. Um, the viewing angles are pretty good as you can see here. Um, there is no change in colors and also the contrast doesn't change. The digitizer works very nice as well. Um, it's fairly precise and there is a bit of an input lag but by far not um, as much as it would need to be to become disturbing. The surface which by the way is made from Gorilla Glass 3 is very smooth and the digitizer is capable of recording recognizing up to 10 fingers at once. Going deeper into the handset we will discover a MediaTek MT 
6795T SoC or Helio X10 in the Prime version of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. Um, this chipset is clocked at 2.2 GHz. The GPU is a PowerVR Rogue G6200. The chip is very fast, scratching at high-end level for sure, being somewhere in between the Snapdragon 801 and the Snapdragon 8. 10. Other specs are 2GB of LPDDR3 RAM, which in case of the Redmi Note 2 is pretty fast at almost 5GB per second, and also 32GB of internal memory are built in. Plenty of sensors are present as well, as you can see here, um, including a gyroscope and an e-compass. The performance reached with those specs is more than satisfying for the asked price, in my opinion. Um, if you ask me to compare the performance um, with some other devices, I would say it's on par with a OnePlus 2. There really are no apps or even games that max the phone out. So anyone saying that GPUs inside MediaTek SoCs are bad or 2GB of RAM aren't enough these days is wrong and should first try such a device before telling nonsense. There's just one downside I stumbled upon though and that's the heat this phone generates after about 15 minutes of intense gaming, Modern Combat 5 for example, the phone gets very hot and according to CPU set the chipset reaches up to 72 degrees and also here in idle mode not a long time after booting the phone up um, we have almost 38 degrees for the CPU which is a little high already. Um, so it seems like the cooling solution inside of that doesn't work so well due to all of the plastic and another cause of the immense heat uh, generation of this device could be the software since in my case MIUI 7 beta is pre-installed here which is the latest version of MIUI and well as I said, this is beta, so it might not be perfectly optimized yet. Anyway, I am positive that Xiaomi are aware of these issues and will fix that soon. Probably with the release of MIUI 7 Stable, which is scheduled for a release soon. Unfortunately, I won't be able to test it since the Redmi Note 2 has only been lent to me this time. Signal strength on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 Prime is perfect across the board, but that didn't surprise me much since due to metal being absent in the design, um, it isn't too hard to get a proper signal for the manufacturer. One thing that might put some people off though is the missing LTE Band 20 support on this phone, uh, which really is a pity that this is missing. Um, GPS on the other hand is working perfectly fine, weather conditions haven't been too good here lately, yet the phone still managed to hit a 2 meters fix within um, with 18 satellites within 6 seconds on the very first try and of course navigation and stuff works just as flawless as it would on any other Xiaomi phone. While doing phone calls, the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 provided a decent audio quality to both ends with the noise cancellation working absolutely well, playing audio through the internal media speaker that is placed on the rear resulted in a surprisingly decent audio quality with a very loud output and a decent amount of bass. And headphones obviously are a pleasure to use with the Redmi Note 2 since the MediaTek Helio X10 actually comes with an integrated hi-fi audio solution um, that makes up for some crystal clear audio and well that is further optimized by Xiaomi using Direct HD um, which is um, a kind of an audio enhancer that also offers a system equalizer you can adjust when you have headphones attached and it also offers some presets for popular headphone models including the Xiaomi piston range. So audio is really enjoyable on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. The 13 megapixel rear camera on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 disappointed me a little. It performs very similar to the camera found on the Lenovo K3 Note, which obviously means it isn't bad at all, yet it doesn't live up to the standard we all are used to on Xiaomi phones. And of course, 
cannot even get close to the camera performance of a Meizu M2 Note. Close-up pictures and a daylight look very decent and the focus is working very fast thanks to PDAF. Also it doesn't take long to take pictures, um, you receive a picture immediately after hitting the shutter button. Moving on to landscape shots, the first deficits become noticeable though. Those just don't look very sharp and detailed which is very noticeable when viewing the pictures on a larger screen or zooming into them on the phone. Fine details just look blurred but at least the colors look very decent. The camera also has some issues with bad lightning. Um, it doesn't take much to get noisy pictures. The LED flash cannot help there either since it only is a single LED flash and isn't too bright. Larger rooms can't be lit up properly, um, properly with it so in the end it only is suitable for close-ups. Um, the video performance also isn't that good. The 1080p clips shot with the Redmi Note 2 don't look very sharp, which might be caused by the high compression rate. Audio, however, sounds very decent, which obviously is due to the second microphone. The front camera takes pictures with 5 megapixels, but if you want to take selfies, you will be disappointed to hear that pictures don't look good at all. They are noisy and, once again, not very sharp. Battery life is another thing about the Redmi Note 2 that disappointed me previously. I suggested that Xiaomi have to do some more optimization on the software part since that probably causes the enormous heat while gaming. Well, that kind of gets confirmed when looking at battery life. In performance mode, I get about two hours of screen on time ne needing to recharge twice a day. Switching to power saving mode will give me close to six hours according to Geekbench 3, but performance really is noticeably slower than. Now you might say that this is simply due to the fast chip, but actually that's not true. With proper optimization, the Helio X10 doesn't need much power at all and actually is one of the most power efficient high-end SoCs out there. And since I own a Meizu MX5 at the moment that comes with the very same chipset, I can directly compare the two. On the Meizu MX5, I never have issues getting throughout a day and get screen on times of up to seven hours even on performance mode so Xiaomi needs to do something here and I forgot to mention that the Meizu MX5 has almost the same battery capacity as the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2. Regarding the charging time I can say that this makes up a bit for the bad battery life. It only takes one and a half hours to get uh, the battery charged from 20 to 100 percent which isn't much obviously. So my verdict about the Xiaomi Redmi Note 2 Prime all in all, I am very much impressed. The handset isn't too expensive, especially when looking at the Chinese pricing. And considering that, the specs and performance you get are mind-blowing. Um, the handset can easily keep up with high-end phones performance-wise, so there definitely is no way around admitting that this is one of the best budget tablets around right now. And depending on your needs, probably even the best one. Um, Anyway, the Fablet doesn't come without flaws though. Um, next to the battery life, that could be way better. Um, as well as the enormous heat while playing games, there also are two lies, Xiaomi told when they launched the phone. First, it doesn't boast a sharp display like they told in the beginning. That has been proven meanwhile and they stopped advertising that. Second, the camera on the rear isn't a Samsung ISOCELL sensor, but Xiaomi stopped claiming it as well and changed it to a normal Samsung sensor. Anyway, at 180 bucks you pay for the phone on international reseller sites, the device is a real bargain and shows what's possible even with a low budget. So in the end, that beauty is well worth a recommendation. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the review. If there are any questions left, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below the video. If you like what we're doing at Guest China Germany, make sure to visit us at www.guestchina.de and follow us over at Facebook, Google Plus and Twitter. Next you will see a performance demo and I say thanks for watching. Bye bye, over and out.
Yes, sir.